Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new. Hi hello, my name is Loie and I cannot believe I'm finally doing this. I can't believe I'm doing this number one on a day when like my being is not put together. Like I got my lashes done today and I didn't think about the fact that I wanted to film tonight but I couldn't get my like eyelashes wet for like 24 hours. So most of you guys have been waiting on me to read the full story of Dear David from start to finish, aka where it is now, since it definitely seems like the story is starting to slow down. That's kind of what I was waiting for, was that big sort of like break or the end before I did this full read through, because I didn't want to inevitably wind up doing another one in like, a month. <laughs> Before I get into this video, I want to say very quickly that Dear David kind of brought in a lot more viewers for me. Um, Dear David was the reason that I met Haley. It was the reason that I found Adam Ellis. It kind of changed a lot actually and I get very sentimental over this story but a lot of you guys found me through this story so if you did thank you for sticking around and if you haven't already make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and hit that notification bell if you don't mind because YouTube doesn't like to notify you when I put out new videos but most of you have wanted to see this so without any further ado here it is dear David the full story. Forgive me, by the way, if lighting changes, if kind of camera structure changes, this is gonna be a long one and I know I'm gonna have to take breaks in between takes. On August 7th of 2017, Adam Ellis tweeted, so my apartment is currently being haunted by the ghost of a dead child and he's trying to kill me, thread. He started appearing in my dreams, but I think he's crossed over into the real world now. The first time I saw him, I was experiencing sleep paralysis, and I saw a child sitting in the green rocking chair at the foot of my bed. This was the first ever photo of David. This was Adam's first initial sketch of David, and to look at this photo is so creepy. Um, it's so eerie to see this now after everything. He had a huge misshapen head that was dented on one side. I did my best to draw it. For a while, he just stared at me, but then he got out of the chair and started shambling towards the bed. I couldn't move because I was paralyzed. I have sleep paralysis fairly often and it sucks. Right before he reached my bed, I woke up screaming. I had another dream a few nights later where I was in a library and a girl came up to me and said, you've seen Dear David, haven't you? I was like, who? And she said, Dear David, you saw him. She continued, he's dead. He only appears at midnight and you can ask him two questions if you say, Dear David, first. Then she added, but never try to ask him a third question or he'll kill you. I was very shaken. Having two dreams about the same thing is pretty weird. Anyway, a couple of weeks passed without incident. Then David came back in another dream. Same situation. I was in bed and he was sitting in the rocking chair near the window, staring at me. In the dream, I say, Dear David, how did you die? He mumbles, an accident in a store. I say, Dear David, what happened in the store? He groans, a shelf was pushed on my head. I'm frozen with fear. I ask, who pushed the shelf? David doesn't answer. I realize that I've asked a third question, which I'm not supposed to do. At that point, I wake up, absolutely terrified. The next couple of days, I googled deaths in the city, but I can't find anything about a kid named David dying in a store. I even try different names. Daniel, Dylan, Devin, nothing. A few weeks goes by without incident. Sort of randomly, the apartment above mine is vacated, and I have the opportunity to move into it. It's a larger apartment, so I'm thrilled. Meanwhile, Adam, I'm over here trying to get a smaller apartment, because <laughs> I don't need a three bedroom anymore, and it's too big and too empty and too scary for me. Another month or two goes by and I sort of forget about dear David. I think he lost track of me because I moved upstairs. But lately, something strange is happening. This is the first photo of his cats who have become such like a monumental part of the story. For the past four nights, my cats gather at the front door at exactly midnight and just stare at it, almost like something is on the other side. Last night, I got a weird feeling and looked out the peephole and I'm dead certain I saw movement on the other side. When I opened the door and turned on the hall light, nothing was there, but my cat seemed unnerved, bushy tails, etc. And that's where I am right now, 
Dear David found me, I think. I don't know what to do. I'll keep you updated. That was the first Dear David thread. If you're not a sentimental little bean right now, I don't know, I don't even know what to tell you. But that was the first update and then two days later on Wednesday, August 9th, 2017, there was a photo of one of his cats staring at the door and a clock in his hands, a green clock, mind you, just a minute after midnight. Update. For the sixth night in a row, my cat has walked over to the door promptly at midnight and stared at it. This is followed by a tweet saying, what's going on? With a video of his cat meowing at the door and freaking out and wanting to get at something on the other side. Okay, so I took a photo through the people because I am too scared to open the door. I feel like I saw something. I couldn't tell, so I mustered the courage to open the door. Nothing was out there, but I took another photo. Look at this. Is it just me or is there something in the first photo? Right where the banister meets the shelves. Hiding on the stairs. I wasn't sure if it was a smudge or something, so I took a second photo from the inside. There was something out there. And you can see here, that's the first, and it's interesting how a lot of that mist kind of looks the same. That first kind of like, you can tell David is lurking out there. I deadbolted the lock and got in bed because I didn't know what else to do. I can still hear my cat meowing at the door. And then a photo of Maxwell in the dark, just staring at him and his eyes are all lit up. Oh, I'm pretty scared. August 10th, 2017. It's been pretty quiet tonight. I'm gonna try out a sleep talk app to see if anything happens during the night. I'm heading to bed, but the cats are back at the door. They only do this in the middle of the night. It's routine now for them to gather at the door like that. The next night he includes a video of his cat again freaking out at the door and says, here we go, just minutes before midnight. Shortly after posting this video, he said, they're both there now, just crowding around the door. And then right after this, he decides to go ahead and block off the door with a barrier of salt. And he says, I don't even know if this is the right kind of salt, just kind of like trying to ward off evil spirits. Maxwell is extra talkative tonight. He's obviously trying to tell me something. August 11th, 2017. I used a sound app to record my apartment last night. It makes individual recordings each time it hears something. There were 33 recordings. Most of them are pretty vague. A couple of them are passing cars and the like, but there are three that I'm interested in. The first is a snapping sound and what seems like a single step. It's odd because I didn't get out of bed all night. And you know what? I don't know that I've ever even listened to the SoundCloud recordings before. I don't know why, in the early days of Dear David, I just, I wasn't quite as thorough as I am now. This one is weird because out of 33 recordings, this is the only one that has that strange electric sound throughout. This directly follows the electric static. Another snap, and then I groan in my sleep. These happen between 2 and 3 a.m. I have no explanation for them. I'll keep recording and share if I find anything curious. The next update was Saturday, August 12th of 2017. Oh, we got so many Dear David updates back then. We were so spoiled. And this one is a selfie of Adam saying, getting the F out of my haunted apartment for the weekend. And that was when somebody let him know on Twitter that there was something eerie in the background behind him saying eyes, nose and mouth, misshapen head, small stature. Please tell me that's just a painting. 
and he responds with, I have no explanation for this. I remember that the next thread of tweets was what got me really into Dear David and really freaked out about the whole thing. This was on Monday, August 14th of 2017. So a weird thing just happened. Take it with a grain of salt. He then has a picture of his Instax Mini 9 like instant film camera. I bought a Polaroid camera this weekend because they're fun and dorky. I decided to take a few photos around my apartment. Polaroids are stupid and fun and inherently sort of creepy. I didn't expect to find anything and for the most part I didn't. I took a couple in my living room and my bedroom. That's the rocking chair I first saw David in. They're pretty unremarkable. Then I went into the hallway and I snapped a photo and the Polaroid developed completely black. I even ripped open and destroyed a fresh pack so I could see if it was just an undeveloped Polaroid but they start out white. I also thought maybe I accidentally covered the lens with my finger, so I took a photo while intentionally covering it. The photo on the left is me covering the lens with my finger. The one on the right is my fully lit hallway taken just after midnight. This could be nothing. I'm not sure what to make of it. And then along with this, Adam had included some videos just sort of proving that he was, you know, taking the photos and whatnot so that no one could call, you know, bull on the story at this point. Okay, here's my living room. And I'll leave that there. Okay, now I'm gonna take a photo of the hallway just to show you what that's like. As you can see, the first one has already developed. So let's see what this one does. It's gonna take a minute, but it is developing black. So I don't know. It came out totally black again for a second time. Honestly, I don't know why I'm still messing around with this camera. There might be a logical explanation. Someone told me to take photos farther away, so I tried that. Once with my iPhone and once with the Polaroid. So this photo is with the phone. The next is with the Polaroid. The hall light was on both times. Why is it pitch black every time that Polaroid. That photo, that photo was what terrified me about Dear David. And it's so weird to look back and think like, I had completely forgotten about that. Cause now like David's like, whoo buddy, I won't spoil it for those of you that are just watching and like listening into the story for the first time, but holy cow, ma'am. This whole thread has been really convoluted and I'm sorry if it was hard to follow. I just thought it was all weird and I wanted to share. The following day, he said, folks have been urging me to get some sage. So I did. And then he just has a photo of him burning the sage, obviously. Saging the hall and definitely saging the heck out of this rocking chair. Honestly, sage doesn't seem like it'll help much, but I'm open to anything. I barely slept last night. I kept waking up and feeling like something was wrong. But who knows? Maybe this will do something. What I think is interesting is I don't know where it was, but there was a tweet of Adam with a Ouija board. I don't know if that tweet still exists anymore and it was originally on here and it was just deleted from backlash. But originally within this story, there was a tweet of Adam with a Ouija board in his hands and said, you know, people are telling me not to do this, but I got it just in case. And now that tweet isn't in the collection of tweets, the Storify, um, that Adam himself created. So I'm intrigued to know why that piece is no longer part of the puzzle. So anyways, he burns the sage and cleans the house and says, sage should not work the following day. I haven't dreamed about David in a few months, but he appeared again last night. In the dream, my bedroom was filled with a hazy smoke, but I could see David sitting in the chair across the room. He was smaller this time, almost shrunken. 
he didn't do or say anything except look at me. Anyway, it feels like a bad omen. So I'm really sorry to interject in the middle of the video like this, but I had realized something in editing this video that I pondered over for days whether I should refilm the entire thing because of this and just decided it was so much work that I put into originally filming this, editing it, everything, that I would just quickly jump in and say this. It does appear that maybe Adam had forgotten to add a couple of tweets here and there from the Dear David story to the Storify that he has pinned on his account. At first I was kind of assuming, you know, he was only like making the story on the Storify out of tweets he really thought were important, but there was just this one that I I couldn't shake that I really wanted to read to you guys and then there's another one in this video I really want to talk about as well so sorry for the change but he had tweeted on August 16th 2017 apparently some strange photos have been showing up in some of the photos that I take a couple of people have pointed this out which I don't have a real explanation for this was the major one because a lot of people had pointed this out in the early days of Dear David and I found it weird it wasn't in the storify but you can see clear as day a face in the back of one of his photos I mean that is one of the creepiest creepiest things I've ever seen in my life there's also this which seems less weird but still odd that it resembles David make of a what you will and obviously we looked at those photos earlier the second one doesn't alarm me so much since it seems like it might be a reflection but that first one gives me the creeps Friday August 18th 2017 it's been two weeks and he still does this every night at midnight along with photos of his cat staring at the door other weird stuff has been happening too. I've been recording myself sleeping and it picks up this weird static electricity sound every night around 3 a.m. and it lasts about five minutes. This morning I woke up to the whole house shaking. It felt like a small earthquake. I debated even mentioning that on Twitter because it sounds made up, but I distinctly felt the house swaying. It's just a whole bunch of small things happening at once. I feel so uneasy, like right before a thunderstorm comes. Everyone is telling me to move, but I don't have any guarantee that this won't follow me. The following night, he tweeted a severe thunderstorm warning in his area. They just issued a thunderstorm warning for tonight. Everyone in the city is talking about how weird the sky looks. I can hear rolling thunder in the distance. Now keep in mind that while that may not necessarily seem like part of the story, Adam himself has curated this Storify that I am following, this link of like his tweets that I'm following. So it's very clearly like part of it. Monday, August 21st, 2017. All this ghost stuff has been spooky, but this past weekend was the first time I actually felt unsafe in my home. Thread. On Friday night, there was supposed to be a huge storm. In the end it passed, but that night was bizarre anyway. I fell asleep pretty early. I was incredibly tired for some reason. I had a dream that night where David was dragging me by the arm through an old abandoned warehouse. I'm not sure why I didn't fight back in the dream, or how he was strong enough to pull me, but that's dream logic for you. It was a creepy dream, but I didn't think much of it when I woke up. I took a shower, and then I noticed something. I had woken up with a huge bruise on my arm and you can see that bruise kind of close to the wrist area now look maybe i injured myself the day before and my arm was hurting during the night which manifested as a dream there could have been a totally logical explanation for it so i brushed it off i went to get coffee which i do every weekend when i walk to the coffee place i always pass a food cart repair depot it's always incredibly busy especially on the weekends I've lived in the neighborhood for over four years and the place has always been jam-packed with carts getting serviced. But today, it was completely abandoned. The whole warehouse was totally gutted and empty. Well, almost empty. I went inside to look around because I was astonished that this place was suddenly empty after all these years. Basically, the only thing in the entire warehouse was a single green chair. If you recall, David first appeared in my green rocking chair. It could be nothing, but it's weird that it was the only thing left behind. On my way back from coffee, the warehouse had been shuttered. It's remained shuttered ever since. The chair, the bruise, dreaming about an empty warehouse and then passing by one, it gave me the creeps. Needless to say, I didn't sleep much that night. Too many strange things are happening and more frequently. So, I don't know. Anyway, it was just a strange weekend. Also, from filming this video, I've been filming for like half an hour already and my battery's already so low. I'm glad I charged another. 
Friday, August 25th, 2017. There have been a few small developments in my apartment, but I'm really not sure what to make of them. I just know that I'm scared. Thread. If you recall, my cats usually gather at the door around midnight, but lately it's been getting earlier and earlier every night. I was almost used to the routine, so when they started to cry at the door closer to 10 p.m., I was confused. They began a new routine. Hover around the door at 10 p.m., cry for 15 minutes, then wander off as if nothing's wrong. But this week, something else has been happening. Shortly after the usual cat stuff, around 10.30 or so, I start getting phone calls from an unmarked number. He includes a screenshot of a bunch of no caller ID calls. My entire call history for the past week looks like this. You'll notice I answered one yesterday. Since this has been happening for days on end, I thought it might be an automated telemarketer or something. Usually if it's an automated thing, if you answer once, they quit calling. So I picked up. Instead. What I heard on the other end was a peculiar electrical static sound, very similar to the static my sleep app picks up at night. I didn't say anything, I just listened, waiting for some automated message to chime in. After about a minute, the static stopped and there was silence. I kept listening. I heard what I thought was breathing, but it was so faint I couldn't be sure. My heart was racing, so it was hard to hear. Then, just as I was about to hang up, I heard a very small voice whisper, hello. Something about the way they said hello freaked me out. It wasn't a question or a greeting, just hello, a flat statement. So quiet, I could barely hear it. I panicked and hung up. I didn't know what else to do. I closed all the curtains in my apartment and turned on every single light. I watched TV until dawn because I was too scared to go to sleep. I sort of feel like I'm losing my mind. If I look at each individual incident on its own, there are perfectly logical explanations for everything. But after three weeks of weird stuff happening, I don't know how to make sense of it all. The only thing I feel like I can do right now is write everything down. So that's what I'm doing. And that's what I'll keep doing. The following update was Monday, August 28th, 2017. So I moved the green chair out of the bedroom weeks ago. It's been in various parts of the living room ever since. Thread. I should probably get rid of it, but I'm not sure that would have any effect. Also, I'm going on vacation to Japan in three weeks, and I keep thinking if I can make it to my trip, this will all end, as dumb as that sounds. David lost track of me once I moved, so maybe if he believes I left the apartment again, he'll leave me alone. Anyway, last week I bought a pet monitoring camera so I can keep eye on the cats while I'm overseas. It's basically a nanny cam that connects to the Wi-Fi so you can check in whenever you want. It runs 24-7 and then it includes a screenshot. It also alerts to sound and movement via an app. I blacked out the company since I doubt they want to be associated with ghosts. In any event, I decided to test it out this weekend. I was away from home one night, so I set up the camera before I left. My phone pinged periodically through the evening, alerting me to the cats running around and playing. Normal stuff. Then, around 11, it alerted me that it detected motion, but when I checked the feed of the apartment, I didn't see anything. I watched the feed again, still nothing. I watched a third time, and I finally noticed something. Watch the chair. I knew it couldn't be the wind because I haven't had the windows open at all this summer. I have AC and I like to keep it chilly. It was unnerving, but there wasn't anything I could do about it right then. So I flipped my phone off and tried not to panic. About a half an hour later, I got another motion alert. And here is a feed of that one. If you miss it the first time, like me, look above the shelf. It's a little turtle shell that I hung on the wall. Yes, I know it's weird to own a turtle shell, but my family lives in Montana and I picked it up last year at a native trading post. Since I've been back home, I've been too nervous to turn the camera back on. And today has been pretty quiet. That said, I feel really uneasy. I put the chair in the hall. I hope nothing else happens tonight. On Tuesday, September 5th, 2017, 
It's happening again. Threat. I've been leaving the nanny cam on 24-7. It records every time there's movement or sound, as you know. I was going over the feed from this weekend, and I noticed some weird stuff. During the night on Saturday while I slept, it recorded the cats in the living room. It seemed pretty unremarkable at first. But then, after a few moments, Maxwell freaks out and jumps over something invisible. I don't think it was a bug or anything. Maxwell doesn't react like that with bugs. He just eats them. Something spooked him. What's more, I almost never get bugs. I've seen maybe three in all the years that I've lived here. Anyway, the next night, the camera recorded a couple more strange videos. Specifically, it recorded Maxwell doing this on and off for hours, and Maxwell is like meerkatting in the corner, which if you don't know, usually it's like cats do that when they're really intrigued by something or really freaked out by something. He'd sit up on his hind legs and peer around the room as if looking for something or looking at something. This is odd behavior for him, and I can't come up with an explanation for it, especially because of the next video. Here's the final video the camera recorded that night. I suppose there's a chance it was a fly, but I honestly never get flies, so that seems unlikely. I just can't shake the feeling that something has made its way into the apartment. It's odd behavior for Maxwell in any event. Things feel off this week. I can't explain it. Future me one more time with part of the story that wasn't in the Storify. This was on September 11th, 2017. Every night before bed, I go through the same routine. I feed the cats, brush my teeth, and lock every single one of the three locks on my door because I'm paranoid. Don't ask why my door has three different working locks plus what looks like the remainder of a break-in. I'd prefer not to dwell on it. Anyway, the other night I was getting ready for bed as normal. I went into the kitchen to get cat food. I hadn't even gotten to the pantry when I heard a loud crack. It's better to just watch the video since the nanny cam records everything now. At first I thought maybe it was one of the cats who'd knocked it over, but they were both in the bedroom. As you can see, I slid the lock immediately after realizing what was going on. I also checked it about four more times before bed. The thing that fell was this little knitted cactus in a terracotta planter. It's totally busted now. I live right next to a subway line and my whole house shifts and shakes every now and then, which could explain this. I always get in my head making excuses for whatever's happening. I'm still skeptical, but now every little sound freaks me out. I leave for Japan in two weeks and it can't happen soon enough. Saturday, September 16th, 2017. I've been having so many nightmares lately. Thread. They're way more intense than my usual dreams too. I don't know if it's because I'm stressed or if it's something else. This afternoon I took a nap and I had a dream I haven't been able to shake. In the dream I was laying in bed and rolled over to face the other direction. On the pillow next to me was a severed head with a bloody spine attached, snaking down the bed. The head was staring right at me, somehow still alive. It had this huge smile plastered on its face. Horrified, I screamed, what happened to you? The head smiled even bigger. It feels great. The heads groaned. After that, I woke up. It was dark outside by then. 
and everything was quiet. Other dreams have been just as strange. Things like dark figures staring in my windows, even though I live on the second floor. Stuff that makes no sense in relation to what I've been experiencing in real life. After that dream about the head, I've been feeling uneasy all night. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I decided to go for a walk, if for no other reason than to get out of my apartment. I went to a bodega a few blocks away to get a snack. On the way, I had to pass the warehouse that was boarded up a few weeks ago. It's actually on my way to everything. I pass it twice a day just to get to the subway. I hurried past it since it freaks me out now. At the bodega, I got some Doritos and a seltzer, then made my way back home. When I passed the warehouse a second time, I heard a dull thunk from the other side of the shutters. I froze in place, but there was no other sound after that. I probably should have just continued on, but curiosity got the better of me. There was a grated window next to the doors, about a foot above my head, too high to see into. So I thought to myself, I'm gonna hold my phone up to the window, take one photo, and then run for my life. I made sure my flash was on, positioned my camera lens through one of the grates, and snapped a photo. I almost thought I saw movement when the flash went off, but I couldn't be certain. The light bounced off the grates and was pretty blinding. I couldn't even look at the photo. I just ran all the way home. I was too jumpy to look at it for even a while. I just ate my Doritos nervously. When I finally did look at the photo, here's what I saw. It seemed to have been a different part of the warehouse, maybe an office. There was a bunch of old insulation and what looked like a filing cabinet and a ripped up leather desk chair. Then I noticed something else in the upper right corner, something that looked like a face. The more I stared at it, the more it started to look like a nondescript blur. Now I can't even be sure what I'm seeing. Maybe I'm too deep into this and my brain wants to see David when he's not there. But here, I mess with the filters on my phone a bit. Tell me this doesn't look like him. Friday, September 22nd, 2017. The past few days have been fairly quiet. I haven't been spending much time at home. I leave for Japan in a couple of hours. I've been trying to avoid anything weird before my trip. I still feel like this all might stop if I just leave for a couple of weeks. Whatever happens, I want to thank everyone for their kind thoughts and concerns. This whole ordeal has been stressful and it means a lot. It makes me feel like I'm not going through this alone. See you in a couple of weeks. Friday, September 29th, 2017. I bought a votive tablet at the shrine in Mountain Japan and it says, please protect my cats while I'm away from home. All right guys, I wanted to go ahead and cut this first half of the video short here. Um, this is a very, very, very long story and it is about an hour and some odd minutes worth of content and I just wanted to go ahead and end the first part here. The second part will go up in just a day or two so I hope you guys will keep on the lookout for that. Thanks for watching this. If you did enjoy, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I love you and I will see you in the next video. Bye.